Myself and Jack Nazareth, together with our support team, are undertaking a circumnavigation of the planet Hurston on Dragonflies. After circumnavigating Microtech last year, a follow-up expedition had been in the planning for some time. Hurston is a far more challenging environment than Microtech though, and Dragonfly performance has taken a significant degradation since last year. The route we've chosen this time is a polar route to try and visit as many Hurston biomes as possible on the trip. And so far in this series, we've made our way out to Glorville, crossing the equator and reaching HDS of Hendrick. And then on another 700 kilometers to HDMS Hadley. The next major milestone would be the South Pole, and from our current location, it's more or less a straight run south 1081 kilometers over the pole and onto HDMS Rufus, the destination for stage 4. But the route is long and crosses a lot of latitude lines. This would serve up a lot of different terrain and biome changes, with some difficult challenges along the way, from extremely dense trash to the dense trees of the South Pole savannah, all the while watching sunlight become rarer and rarer as the South Pole is perpetually cloaked in darkness. It was going to be the longest stage of the expedition so far but the team was eager to get underway and reach the South Pole. Immediately setting out, we had another challenge to contend with. We'd killed a player for interfering with our support ships at Hadley, and the spear bikes we'd loaded for the day were all rammed by the hostile player's ballista, so checking them for damage was also important. Just check the bike I pulled out that was on its side. Uh, it's all green, and one component is at 99%. Yeah, these dragonflies all seem good. Fingers was quick to get out there and begin looking for paths that Jack and I could follow, but given the need to make some distance quickly, I had committed to running dangerous ridges. Uh, don't come direct to me just yet. You guys, okay, yeah. Jack is on the right entry. Jack is on the right entry. You're coming up against walls. We needed at least 50 kilometers of separation between us and Hadley before the bigger support ships could join us. Carrick's signature is huge. Yeah, yeah. I could turn the weapons and shields off really, but... Yeah. You can jump up to an OM marker or something and then we're coming up to a jump pile, I guess. Yeah, the flank here. As we cleared the first stretch of light junk, our tax and Trenic would spot a ship returning to Hadley just as we expected. You guys uh, be careful because I have to jump away. Sure. As blue is this guy, I don't want him to ram me. Oh, oh wait, is he, is he there now? I'm not sure if it's him or not, I just saw blue so I took off. Good, yeah. I don't know who I'm targeting. Oh, it's an eclipse. Yeah. What, what's oh, the name that's... of the eclipse? Oh. Yes, indeed. I told you to be back. All you gotta do with Artax is, I guess, get to an OM. Yeah, I mean, I'm away. Okay, so I'm 40 from Hadley. We'd almost made up the minimum 50 kilometers distance when Jack would suffer the first unfortunate accident of the day. That's how I started my day. A phone call woke me up. I'm like, uh, oh, I died. No. Wow. I push on a little further to get us over 50 kilometers, just in time for a hist and sunset. And at last, we could get the team back together again. It's good to get one out of the way, I suppose. Yep. It took a little time for Jack to get back to the surface, and we didn't encounter any harassment, so it seemed that we were in the clear. By the time we were ready to set out again, the sun had set, and on this leg, the sun would be something we'd see less and less as we travelled. I can continue. We knew we'd be crossing through several biomes on this stage, but the first notable observation was just how mountainous the route would be before we hit the savannah. Three more bikes left on the... Fingers would start to scout routes that avoided the most difficult climbs, but for the first few ridges and peaks, Jack and I would be following the straight line south. Climbing, I, I, it, is, it is very difficult, you're right. Like those boulders, the big, big boulders, they are everywhere and it does make it incredibly difficult, but I think I've hit the ridge. As Fingers shot out ahead, we could already see a flat path of desert below. Not quite on bearing, but it was close enough. Just like with previous stages, the straight line is not always the fastest option in this kind of terrain. It was really easy to lose your pit. <laughs> right. Jack was also trying to follow my marker over the same ridge behind. But are you coming over the same ridge? Yeah, I'm basically kind of following your marker, but I'm stuck between. There are gaps in the boulders. Go take it real slow. 
It didn't take long for Fingers to get us back on manageable terrain with a scouted route. The route you picked looks real good. Low lying and flat. Looks good. Yeah, we are meandering off course line a little, but we are progressing south. We're doing it for a good reason, right? Yes. The train were to open up in some way and we could push more speed, we'd make better yeah, I was time. looking at the globe and how the bottom is that golden color. Yeah. Says the savannah, but it's you got to be above the Arctic Circle. Fingers would also check the relative distance between me and Jack to make sure that we were not separating too much. K5, Jack 15. Whoa, I'm missing that again. You must have found a really nice kind of open lane because I'm doing yeah. lots of things. I, I have actually been lucky and found a few good um, like lines, you know, through a lot of awkward trees. Going slower as Jack caught up was actually a welcome break from the constant concentration needed at high speed. And given Fingers was about to relay another unavoidable mountain chain ahead, staying in these pleasant lowlands a bit longer was not such a bad thing. Holy cow, True South is just the Himalayas. You saw that globe image? I did have yeah. my suspicions. I was like, huh, that does look, looks like there's a lot of bumpy terrain down there. The pass through the Himalayas. Fingers had found a pass through the mountains, but as we set out on it, we'd have to face much more of the ridges than maybe we were expecting. Descents were comfortable, but on tightly packed ridges, launching into uncontrolled jumps is just way too common, leading to a lot of damage for the bikes. And Trenick's commitment to getting loose overhead shots was growing with every session. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hello. Hello, Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize the hill. I was trying to go side by side you. Yeah. <laughs> the camera scraped the ground a little bit. <laughs> like I said, damage to the bikes had been steadily accumulating through the mountains. Trenick, if you look at the front of my bike, it's like. It looks real bad. As the sun was rising again, my bike was exhibiting a particular sound that from my experience I know is a result of considerable damage to the grav levs. But Jack's bike was faring much worse, with no brakes, no sort of damage, he would just try and ride it on as far as he could get it. Yeah, I'm actually... have really not much of a choice but to... He's got no retros. No brakes, don't panic. Having no retros oh. is like the late stage of playing Tetris. How am I not dead? Ooh, the sun's <laughs> coming up, the sun's coming up. Wow. There he goes. I landed in a tree and exploded. Oh no. Well, I mean, you know, bike was fucked with it. <laughs> Got a couple of extra kilometers out of it. As I caught up with the point Artax was dropping Jack back into the route, I was feeling confident that I could keep this bike going. Maybe this was because of all the good luck we'd had the day before, but as we entered the sparse forest of missile trees, my misplaced optimism would be quickly broken. Oh! I think I bombed out. Very, very minor drop, but it was enough. Oops. To be fair, I pushed that bike like through so many collisions and stuff. It was, Into it was about dirt. time. Yeah, no, that was pretty wild. This time it was Jack riding past as Artax made another drop. I'm off the ship. We were now considerably south of the equator, and so the sun would be behind us for the rest of the day. And Fingers had gotten into a good rhythm of directing us over reasonably large flat plains between the network of mountains in this region. For now, we'd be moving fast. When all the crows decide to leave, they settle down beneath my feet. I've got it right and I got it wrong. 
But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little while But flat ground does not always mean getting through unscathed Jack would suffer the same fate only moments later. The double bike loss meant that Trenick needed to move more of our spears from the Caterpillar to the Carrack, and we were not off to a great start with destroying bikes. Still, Fingers was finding us great paths, and for the rest of the morning, we'd have a lot of fun riding this desert. It's very, like, so there's undulations, like, it's very hilly, but, like, also very flat at the moment. It's kind of interesting terrain. Yeah, it's low, uh -oh. low bean hills. When I was young, I thought control would lead me to an ending road. And heavy metal seemed to be the only Head though a very unwelcome biome approached. Oh, hello. I see some trash up ahead. Okay, now I have zero retro thrusters. I'd lost Fingers Marker and he had actually found a route around this trash, but in a moment I just ended up pushing into it. You're at the flat part. I think Katie's going on now. Uh, yeah, oh. by the time by the time um, I heard about your bearing, I was already committed. And this is not it's not good training. Either. But you know, it's the line, so. We were nearing the southern side of the truly mountainous region, and so Fingers would guide Jack on a meandering route around this trash-covered ridgeline. Going through was technically a shortcut, but the terrain was much less fun to ride. Brakes are already not being so great. On the far side of the trash, we had plans to end day four with a camp. Support ships bedlogged for us to find the location the following day. Rufus is 6.13. I had no brakes, I couldn't stop. Okay, just two kilometers. So then, yeah, join me on the Carrick. Let me check my distance too. At least we know that it's a straight line between the two, right? It's like quite easy yep. to. Somewhere on the line. 609 to Rufus and 463 kilometers down. That's a lot that we've covered in this space of time. Yeah, yeah totally. it's, it seemed kind of short amount of time, but. Uh... I think we're. we're just moving faster, I think. Yeah. yeah. Day five would begin in darkness, with us all prepped and ready to go. Here we go, here we go. Now, we didn't know this at the time, but there seems to be a great trash band at this latitude. We have not confirmed that it runs around the entire planet, but we saw it on both sides, so it very well could. We would soon be entering some truly difficult terrain to overcome. I'm at a garbage wall. Right now, it's holes and blocks. It's like a mining facility without a, a strip mine somewhere and I can't pick up a whole lot of speed because just as soon as I start to pick up a little bit of speed I gotta turn sharply. Before the trash to come though we'd have poles. I've been to the south, I've been to the north, east and the west, in the middle of course. I may have been astray but I've never been lost. Never been beat by the road I've crossed. You'll know it when you see it. Oh my god, this is like a war zone where I'm at right now. <sighs> if it is a big thing, how do you want me to go see how deep it goes? I mean, it if probably you're, would you're be ranked. a good idea, yeah. If it's 10 kilometers, fair enough. If it's like 100 kilometers, that's gonna take some time. <laughs> that's rubbish. I bet you know fingers, and I see the trash. I'm gonna go and see how deep it is and get it on bearing. Oh gosh, I'm at the wall of trash now. Katie, I'm 200 behind you. I guess we start just picking our way through, hoping for the best. 
All right. Yeah, the, the big panels don't look that dense. It's the poles that get you. I guess I've been lucky to some degree for someone. Little nudge there onto a pole. Yep. Okay. Substantial. Yep, I'm, I'm through it. Okay, so we got about 20 kilometers to go. That's not too bad. It could, it could have been a lot worse. That could have been a lot worse. The first band of trash was not overly dense. We'd have to zigzag a fair amount, but forward progress was not a problem. Random explosions were still an issue, however. Oh! Didn't even hear anything. God damn it! Yeah, no, there was nothing. There's nothing there. Well, unless you count those little like flat plants as something. Yeah, we're all the way down. As the sun began to rise, we'd hit the second trash band. This was to be both wider and far, far more dense. Oh, we got some trash coming down. Yeah, I've seen. It's just right. a question of finding a route, pushing on through. But the trash here was so dense, even getting into it would be a challenge. I've got to find an entry point, let alone. Okay, right now, I do it. not have one. <laughs> I'll try the left. We got insanely dense on you. Um, okay, yeah, go left. With Jack heading left, I'd find out right, and actually, there was a nice open stretch before meeting the trash again. Oh wait, it clears up a lot over here. Like With Trenick observing from above, I knew we could find a way into the trash. Oh, I'm in a dead Holy head. shit, this is so this is so thick. So like, so like hard left, and there you go, and then you get a hard right. <laughs> well, okay, I've managed to find a way in. Just. Let's see, this is insane. Yeah, this is real thick. Finding a little clear stretch here and there was nice, but to say this trash was a maze would be an understatement, and fingers would reveal just how far we had to go. It starts to become medium density here. 35k. Oh, it's gonna be a rough day. We had 35 kilometers of this garbage to navigate, and the real tangles had only just begun. No. Okay, there is there is a little gap here I can get through. Very, very tight. Don't know if it goes anywhere there. Oh you can't go. Oh I saw. Can I get up to here? Yeah! Wow, oh my that. god, that is tight. Holy very shit. Nice. <laughs> That was the tightest gap I've had to go through in this entire trip so far, Jesus. <laughs> Very nice. All these little beams poking up at you. Just a sea of dense trash. Oh, wow. Go right. Go right? Okay. Good job. Right through right there, I can't see. 
at what felt like a midpoint of this mess was a ridge and by now both my bike and Jack's bike was significantly beaten up, unable to react well to control inputs. In this environment that is a difficult problem to adjust to. Yeah I absolutely have zero retro thrusters so I'm just uh... That's not to say there isn't something fun about picking your way through the trash like this, and actually by the end of this trip we'd learn a whole different way of facing these, and a bunch of tricks to make the traversal a lot easier. Negative. Once damage starts to accumulate though, it just leads to more, and with so much of this to cover, I kind of knew changing bike would be necessary at some point. Getting there slowly, we are making progress. Very slow. Oh. Very painful progress, but you came into my life like a sweet embrace, swept me off my feet and made me whole again. Yeah, that's about it. Let's pull back. Uh, if you I think I'm about to go here actually. Yeah. God bless. Like a little bit of a road if you go left now. Go there left, okay. Uh, right. oh, oh. You'll notice now that the retro thrusters are visibly not firing. This is a surefire way to tell there is nothing left of them, on top of being unable to break, of course. My retro's uh -oh. gone. <laughs> Switch them down. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was little. I was going on, still minding my own business. Never knew the life had just begun You came into my life Like a sweet embrace Swept me off my feet And made me whole again Not far ahead though, another near impassable wall of trash that required searching for a way through And this approach looked good at first, but presented another unique problem. Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Uh -oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, go left. This doesn't look good. Through there. Can you turn it left and Oh, fall maybe I, can, I think I can drop through yeah. after. Get yeah. over that little curb. Oh. <laughs> Like a sweet embrace, swept me off my feet, and made me whole again. I was finally nearing the end of the trash here, but Jack's bike was also at the end of its useful life now, and so Trenner could fly back to provide a replacement. The carrot cannot easily land in this trash, but the Valkyrie is just small enough to make it happen. Once I get to fingers, I think we should take a little break, so I can have a drink. Because I think we ruined it after that. Oh, ah, no. Nope. Don't blow up. Don't you dare blow up. We'd made it to the south side of the Great Trash Band and a rest was welcome before making the push towards the South Pole Savannah. How much distance have we covered in this last? <laughs> 30k. <laughs> there you are. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, your markers went away, but I can, I can see the... Uh... We could already make some observations about the sun at this point in the trip. We knew it was going to get darker and darker from this point on. The closer oh, we get oh, to the South Pole, the more and more it will just be night. Because the North Pole is perpetual, like, <clears throat> daylight or evening, you know. Yep. But what was a surprise was Fingers informing us that this was actually around noon right now. At this latitude, this is midday sun. It's actually a little after past noon right now. Oh, yeah, wow. It's, it's perpetual twilight at this yeah. point. Look how low in the sky the sun is for noon. Like, that's crazy. It's yeah. a very short day. Yeah. Just the tip of the parabola. From here, our expectation was red desert for a few hundred kilometers, and then savanna over the polar region. And after the trash, the train would feel like a dream. But little did we know, there was yet another surprise coming, and this time for the better. Yeah, I gotta start recording this. Owing to the pleasant environment, everybody began to take videos and screenshots. Wow, that was a cool shot with the VAP roaring over me. <laughs> of course, focusing too much on getting footage can be dangerous. 
and I'm steering kind of the over the shoulder shot. Ah. Uh oh. <laughs> I was trying to get a cool camera shot, and uh, <laughs> I was not looking in front of me, and I hit a tree. <laughs> I, I brought that one on myself. <laughs> Lots of dust. Damn, that is very dramatic with the sun behind you. Contacts. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, this is good terrain. It's fast, but there's lots of stuff of interest. In the night, when I close my eyes, I'm out of my mind. In the night, when you kill the light, I'm going out of my mind. Okay, uh, there's some kind of steep divots that I'm uh, encountering right now, little pothole type things. The Red Desert was becoming a lot less even, with gullies and sharp ditches to be mindful of, but now I had caught back up to Jack and we pushed on south together for a while. Fingers would give us an update on our distance to Rufus, and we were making great time now. 400. 400? Ooh, wow, we are getting there. We're making it happen. Trash. Still no uh, yellow desert tundra. The Red Desert was pretty quick terrain, and our expectation was somewhere down here. We would just end up straight into Savannah, but not too far into the Red Desert. Something amazing happened. It's real open down here, there's nothing here, there's no obstacles. Yeah. We would call this the mud flats, and while it was not as clear as the anomaly we'd seen on stage two, this was truly fast terrain. Depending on how long this lasts, we're gonna make a really good time. Because right now, you can just go full speed. Yeah, I got you. I did turn way to the left. Mike, this is like the most open terrain we've seen. That little stretch of basically salt flat type thing. Yeah. This is the best since then. We pretty much kept it full throttle all the way across, and sometime later, fingers would spot the change in biome ahead of us. Savannah. Way okay. 17 all kilometers right. to Savannah. How much distance have we made? 240. Really? You're such a fragile thing, I know. And yeah, look out, Savannah is here. Watch out for the snaggle trees of Savannah. Katie, I'm on you, uh, 800 meters. Roger, we've got a whole new biome to learn now, Jack. Excitement and speed intoxication were still very much with us as we entered the savannah biome, so we'd have a few shield hits coming over ridges and through trees as we acclimatised. We knew we would not see the sun again until the far side of the pole, and riding this kind of terrain at night can be very tricky. Just feel the summer sun as it warms our bed. Coming from fast terrain to slower terrain like this, well, as we saw in stage three, it can be an adjustment. And Jack was about to have a very close call. Damage when I landed and got stuck in the tree, we're passing Whoa. each other. Whoa, it was close. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, you hit me, I don't know. <laughs> we we clipped that. Uh, <laughs> you got right in front of me, and I think we. Oh uh, yeah, I'm to blame. <laughs> I was the one who was going excessively <laughs> fast. <laughs> Woo! But I'm trying to shelter from pain. Looks really nice, though. It's gorgeous, but it's terrifying without any. 
It's kind of terrifying without any retro versions. For some reason, I'd really struggle through the savannah on this particular stage. It didn't start out too bad, but the trees do get really thick in some places. I mean, it. Yeah, I managed to just squeeze through the gap. As we pressed on towards the pole, though, I'd begin having my run-ins with the savannah trees. I've got, I've got four. I just only have two spare undersuits. Oh, you get an undersuit when you respond. I am there, stuck no. in a tree. You are stuck, stuck. Yeah. Wait, wait. I'm almost out. I think I'm at the last break. Wait, I'm free. Oh, but there you go. I, you destroyed your rear nacelles, though. Marcusia was joining us on support and was bringing spare bikes. This would turn out to be a godsend because our survivability luck was well and truly about to run out. It's tense and crazy, but it's so much fun. For now, though, I'd get stuck in another tree. Looks like you've just oh. crossed the 300 line. Oh, that looked rough. I'm stuck in the tree again. <laughs> <laughs> you love those trees. I've had quite a few tree <clears throat> encounters on this leg so far. Dad. Again, I was having some trouble staying away from the trees this stage, and the next encounter would not be so lucky. Oh. Oh, oh, there, there we go. oh, I saw that explosion. Omens of bad luck were now everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. oh you? <laughs> there we I'm, go. I'm, I'm That'll out. Do <laughs> and yet more strange observations about the sun and its position. Like the sun looks like it's in front of us now. Has anyone else yeah, noticed I'm that? Sure Rufus is. is in the other hemisphere. To get to Rufus, you have to like go to the pole and beyond. Have we crossed the pole yet? Uh, let me see if I can find OM2. We're almost under it, and I'm pointed up at a 70 degree pitch. Whoa. So yeah, we're we're near the pole. We're not quite. We're not over the pole yet. Super close to it though. You were so good at flying, but we can't keep flying. We keep getting stuck on the wrong side of the mountain. We were so good at trying, but we can't keep trying. On the wrong side of the mountain. Yeah, they're very knobby. I have not quite adequate brakes, but the trees are mercifully showing me a pass. Yeah, they like the little turrets. Oh, nothing. What the hell? It wasn't even moving quickly. We were so good at flying. Getting closer to the pole, mountain terrain increased, and we'd find ourselves picking our way through ridges covered in massive rocks. Fortunately, for the most part, the density of the rocks in this biome is much lower than we'd encountered in the Red Desert. This is it. Hopefully, end of leg four. We're almost there, Jack. We're almost there. Oh, there you guys are. We were so good at flying, but we can't keep flying. We keep getting stuck on the wrong side of the mountain. We were so good at trying. We can keep trying, cause we only end up on the wrong side of the mountain. Right. Nice. Oh! That time, there, it was invisible. Whatever he hit was invisible. After losing four bikes over the course of maybe 40 minutes, we were finally closing on Rufus itself, and some canyon runs would mark the divide between the mountainous terrain we cleared and the flat plains surrounding the bunker.
We were actually about seven kilometers from the bunker itself as we pushed past to a safe distance so our support ships could bed log on the side that we were going to be setting out from for stage five. Stage four had been long, covering 1,000 kilometers plus. It's a very long way, even when split over two days. And we'd seen our fish share of challenges along the way as well. But now we'd be pressing on to the far side of the planet for stage five. And we all pretty much unanimously agree that stage five featured both our best and worst day of the expedition. What do I mean by that? Well, join us next time to find out. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Without these very generous people, none of the videos on the channel would be possible because patron support is what allows me the time it takes to edit these videos together. And I'm enormously grateful to all of you for helping me to keep the channel going. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Vlad Vilnius who recently increased his pledge support to the channel. Thank you, Vlad. That was incredibly generous of you and is a huge help. We'll be back with more from Circumnavigating Hurston very soon.